Okay, how are we doing out there? First things first, my name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Illuminous 4K screen paint using ambient light rejection, technology gain times two and three. A lot of people have been asking me questions here and there. You might have questions here and there. People ask asking me, what else can I paint the screen paint on? Now keep in mind, I've already showed uh, drywall. I've shown different surfaces that you can do, but I'm gonna do some random surfaces right here. Coat all this in black. Today we're gonna to be using the Illuminous Ambient Light Rejection. This is our Eclipse Cinema, the black screen, as you see right there. I'm setting that, up, that one pretty soon over here with a bunch of the high power spotlights. Now, yesterday I showed you how to take a everyday projector of VGA and convert it into HDMI, which I have over here. This is my HDMI, you can't see it all, but I'll post a video um, at the bottom of the comment section and you'll get a chance to see how it's done. And there's also two, not only this is a fantastic idea, but if you have a projector that already has HDMI, some of them only have one, I have two, I was looking at two and one upstairs in the main room. Uh, if you only have one, this is a great way to free up and give yourself some extra HDMI outputs uh, for running other components, all right? So you have to keep uh, pulling one out and putting another one in or getting a box or a switch or whatever you have to do. All right, so also, um, this projector right here, people have been asking about that projector. That is a customer's projector. We're replacing the lamp. Uh, we got ordered a new remote control and filters for this one. I have one more left on the website. It is actually coming in today. It's going to be here today. We're going to be playing around with it today. And I'm going to be hooking that up with the, uh, the converter, the uh, VGA, the HMI converter that we designed. Not we designed, but we actually added components to it. Now, tomorrow, the projector I have coming in is going to be a low entry level projector, 720p, 600 by 800 res. It's gonna be SVGA. We're gonna be showing you this on our screen paint, proving that you don't have to spend a lot of money for a projector. Uh, some people will tell you you have to, but you don't. All right, so let's start the demonstration. Now, usually you know, people will go on and on about rollers. People, it's not that big a deal. Any roller, actually not any roller, any nap roller, will work perfectly. Any nap roller. Doesn't have to be sheepskin. I don't want sheepskin. Sheepskin or sheep, whatever it was. Doesn't have to be any nap roller. I get rollers from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree rollers. I use those from time to time. You don't have to worry. Some people tell you lint free or whatever. You, you don't have to go through all that. It's just a bunch of poppy, poppy crop or shenanigans or that dumb nonsense. Let me show my pails are all the way out. All right, so. Priming? No, you don't have to prime. Your walls can be polka dot, stripe, whatever you want. Doesn't make a difference. You can paint over it. As long as you don't have no ridges or anything coming out from the wall, you know, you don't have to worry about that. So these are our containers. These are lock containers. Mine's halfway open, so that's why. But even halfway open, this sucker's a pain in the, not pain in the neck, but we make sure they're sealed. That's a lock container. So you don't have to worry about that thing opening up on entry. I don't like using cans anymore because cans. Um, one of the things about cans I don't like, even though this is a formula and it's very safe, uh, the formula needs to breathe. So you put it out of a can, it basically may call it to implode. A lot of science behind this stuff besides, you know, people think you just slap a few things together and voila, you're done. But anyway, I'm going to put some of this like here on so. All right, I'm going to grab our roller, everyday roller. I'm going to throw a mess on my roller. i got to clean my floor. All right, I'm just going to roll over the screen. Keep in mind, this is a one coat application. You're not going to have to worry about going up and down into a robot formation. Get our little corners here. You know me, that's how I paint. I like to get my corners. So we'll get our little size here. Come over here. And that's it. This is a one coat application. It's very easy to do. You don't have to be a professional painter, because people think you have to be a professional painter. You don't. It's very easy to do. So, as you can see, no priming required at all. I was able to roll over the screen, no time at all. Easy McCheesy. Yes, that's my line right there, easy McCheesy. All right? And this is a piece of wood. Now, you can paint over wood, you can paint over whatever you want. Now, if it's a very smooth surface like vinyl, I don't know why you would paint over a linoleum, sorry, linoleum, then I would suggest you prime it because it's going to be a very slick surface. But other than that, anything else? You're done. 
Look at this. And never, ever, ever use a foam roller. Don't use foam rollers. Foam rollers are a bad idea. Very, very bad idea for foam rollers. Because a foam roller will mess around and shriek the daylights out of your screen. They're not designed for that kind of paint. All right, so this is one of those mats that you see when people exercise, go to the gym, or you might see them in some your kindergarten classes for your kids. This is what this is, this rubber mat. So we're gonna paint the rubber mat. Paint the rubber mat, here we go. Get my screen over there, and that's it. We're done. Rubber mat complete. All right, we got cardboard. Let's flip over a piece of cardboard. Smooth side. A cardboard screen. And I see everybody now doing cardboard screens, but we're the ones who started that. The one they're taking the postal shipping boxes and turn them into cardboard screens. Go back to my old video archives. I'll show you in there when I started way back in 2011 or 2012, we're doing cardboard because it was told that you had to, at that particular time, that's when goose screen was all the rage. And it was told that you had to paint it on a particular surface and the surface had to be smooth and there were a lot of guidelines to screen paint. And I think that's what so many people today that are designing, making screen paint don't understand that if you were back in the time when Goose Screen and Mighty Brighty and all them were out, you know what I mean, you would have known that there were certain requirements for painting a projection screen. This is styrofoam. I wouldn't suggest using styrofoam, but this is just to give you an idea on what this stuff coats, what this stuff will cover. No, if you got a smooth sheet of styrofoam, this one has divots in it and dents and all that other messed up stuff, but if you have a smooth piece of styrofoam, then so be it. Go over it and paint it. There you go. I've got some craters in there. I can't quite get contact with. There we go. There we are. We coated a piece of styrofoam. So we got styrofoam, no time at all. Like I said, easy to do, very easy to do. No, very easy to do. Oh, drywall. So this is a drywall. I'm gonna repaint this one. Hopefully I can do this without nailing the wall. There we go. This is the one I had on here that was the, uh, the silver eclipse. I'm gonna convert it over into black. Get my corners. I like to get my corners. That's how I always do my screens. I always start my screens off and get my corners. All right, my corners are done there. And got some extra on here. I'll take some of this extra off. This is how much coverage this stuff has that I can actually go over to that other to that other uh, screen and just take some of the excess off of it and still use it to coat this in. I said very easy to coat. There's no priming involved. Now I may get paint on this white wall right here because like I said, these sheets are still gonna be a tad bit, a tad bit wet. Um, and there may cause some, some uh, something on the screen. I'm gonna put a little bit right there. It's not gonna really change the screen or anything at all. Some people think if they put a coat on, it's not right. They put too much on one side, it's gonna cause an uneven coat. That's not gonna be a problem here. Doesn't make a difference. I can let the paint dry heavy on one side of the screen and I just wanna make sure I get the corners better. Yeah, so, get them all the way down. So we got nice black in the center of our screen. So there we go. 
we're all painted up. Everything is done. Got old black spark done on the screen. We're gonna take our roller, which we should be putting the back in the plastic bag if I can find it. I'm gonna set it right here for the time being. No harm. It's not gonna dry out by then. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to take my my uh my gym mat. Put it over here. I may jack the wall off a little bit, but it doesn't make a difference. Alright, put that over there. Probably gonna just get a piece of it from the projector. And let's see. Um I have no boxes down here. I have a crate. So I can find me in a container. I've always got plastic containers around here somewhere. I'm gonna grab this one instead. I'll put this right there. Heavy perfect right there. I'll put that right there. So I'm gonna grab my wooden screen. I like to do the videos. I don't like to paint the screen and then my thing is I don't like to paint the screen and then show you it after the screen is dry. I like to do the video while the screen is drying. That's the way I like to do it. All right, I smudged a little bit at the top. I'm not worried about it. All right, so let me come over here. Let me turn my projector on. I don't want to get paint on this controller. This controller is like $80 for this controller. A lot of you are not. Very expensive controller. One of the projectors I was bidding on, on that one right there, uh, didn't have the controller. And you know, I was doing a bid on it, just hitting the area that I hit by accident. Stay, be nice. We're gonna roll off for a minute. So one of the uh, projectors I was bidding on didn't have the controller. This one did. Like I said, the screen is still wet. Gotta keep in mind. So like I said, these screens are dark. They start off dark uh, when they're wet. And when they start to dry, they get lighter. There's our cardboard right there. So we're gonna take our cardboard and we're going to put our cardboard here. Right there. There we go. Got a little bit of everything up there. Our makeshift screen. I love it. I love it. We're just gonna put our little squares in here and there. Here we go. Oh, it's an interesting projection screen, isn't it? All right, so let's tap the... When we look at the world in a different way, we realize... It's pretty cool, huh? I tell you, this technology is amazing. I love it. I love this technology. I love it so much. You just turn anything you want into like a black OLED projection screen. There's no, you have to be a professional. You don't have to go through none of that nonsense. You don't have to be a pro, you know, to do this. You can, oops, something just died on me. I wonder what happened. I think I bumped my converter. Yeah, I did, I bumped it. Let me see what we got going on here. Yep, Chromecast, yeah, I bumped it. Don't worry about it, it'll power up. Yeah, my cord on my, I'm gonna show you how to replace that too, the cord on the Chromecast, because they do get some wear and tear after pulling them out. I pull mine out quite a bit when I move about the house. So they do get a bit of wear and tear on them. So I'm gonna show you how to basically go in, and it's an everyday cell phone cable, that's all it is. Let me come here and see if I can pull my video up real quick. There we go, we'll go back, we'll be back, we're back in, we're going back in. There we are. Yeah, I bumped my cable. But I'm going to show you how to go in and fix that because you don't have to go buy a cable. Let's so say you have to buy that cable that goes with you. Then you can actually use an everyday cell phone cable. Let me go back because I missed some of that when we bumped the cable. So let's go back. I do apologize for that. Yeah, it's an everyday cell phone cable. That's all it is. The cable that you use to charge your cell phone, that's all it is. You know, because I saw them, my mind got damaged. I was thinking, okay, I just have to go back and go to um, go, go, go to Chrome or Google, whatever, and try to get another one. And I'm looking at the cable, like this looks a lot familiar. And it looked exactly like my cell phone charger, and that's what I used.
I'm telling you, this is one of the most interesting demonstrations you will see anybody ever do. And I guess I try to do things outside the box just to show you exactly how amazing this technology is. So we used cardboard, we used a rubber mat, they use them in gyms, we used drywall, wood, and styrofoam. And that just shows you that no matter what surface you paint it on, it's all gonna react the same way. Because you have some people thinking, okay, if I paint it on this, or if I paint it on that, will it react the same way? Yes, it's gonna react the same way. I had a lot of fun doing this demonstration. I mean, a lot of fun. I, I have fun doing all my demonstrations, but this one was actually really fun. All right. Let's see if we can pull up another one. Now, you see the difference where the white areas are at? See how faded the screen looks? Keep in mind, still lights are on in this environment. We have plenty of lights in the environment. Nice and bright in here. All right, for my time runs out here, I'm Kenneth Bird from Illuminous 4K Screen Paint using Amulite Rejection Technology Game Times 2 and 3. This right here is our Illuminous Amulite Rejection. This is the Eclipse Cinema Screen Paint. Mind you, it's on sale right now on our website along with all our other screen paints. It, is, it does come with a blackout cloth. 